right, Charlie? What happened? Oh, I got back as fast as I could. I just had to go around some weather. Well, you're a little late, but I think we can make it before the uh, committee meet. I hope so. Come on, my car is right yeah, over here. Sorry about that. Okay, well, I go John Brennan of St. Paul, Minnesota. At the moment, the farthest thought from his mind is the fact that he and thousands of other general aviation pilots might represent a significant segment of the national transportation system. Most pilots are primarily interested in how flying benefits them in their own personal and business lives. And many, like John Brennan, have good reason for contacting their instructors and upgrading their qualifications. You know, I wondered why you waited so long to go for your instrument rating. Well, you, you know how it is. You, uh, you keep putting it off and putting it off until weather delays cause you to miss a couple of important business conferences. Then you decide to do something about it. Well, I think as many pilots as possible should get their instrument ready. I mean, it makes it a lot easier for them to get where they want to go in the air traffic system. Okay, let's see how well we can do with instruments today. General aviation is a catch-all term that just doesn't do justice to the great variety and scope of this segment of flying. That's why general aviation today is often the subject of both fact and fiction. Did you know that of all the aircraft in this country, only 2% is operated by the airlines? Only 20% are military, and the other 78% are general aviation. Now, that's a lot of airplanes. More than three-fourths of all the aircraft in this country. In fact, all the estimates show that future increases in the number of pilots, planes, and hours flown will be by far the greatest in general aviation. Do you know that right now, you fly more than four times as many hours as the air carriers each year? You have more than 20 times as many licensed pilots. That's nearly three quarters of a million. And here's something else that most people never think of. You fly out of all of the 12,000 airports in this country. The airlines serve only about uh, 800. That means that the only access by air to the other 11,000 plus airports are the planes you fly, general aviation aircraft. You know, there are a lot of people in these communities that think that you just fly around boring holes in the sky. They don't recognize the fact that most general aviation flying is income producing and that you are actually contributing to the economic well-being of their communities. International Airlines, the Valley Fund ICA charter flight to Shannon and Dublin, now ready as Can I help you, sir? Set. Yes, I need to get to Ableton right away. What's available? Sir, we have a flight leaving in about 15 minutes. Can okay. I see your ticket? Air Wisconsin, Air Commuter Service is now ready for passenger boarding at gate 37. Every day, all over the United States, business executives fly to and from important appointments. Some go via commuter service. Some in sleek modern jets. Others fly as passengers in less sophisticated planes. Many pilot their own aircraft. But whatever they fly, 70% is revenue producing. Including executive, Business, air taxi, rental, aerial application, training, and industrial. The federal government recognizes that general aviation is the biggest and fastest growing segment of aviation that it's capable of making a major contribution to the economies of many cities and towns, that it's an indispensable part of the total air transportation system. General aviation airports tie many communities to the rest of the nation. They attract business organizations that want to locate away from congested city areas, yet remain in touch. They make it possible for people to live and work in rural areas that once could offer only limited job opportunities. They have actually revitalized many communities that otherwise might have suffered from economic stagnation.
As a result, many now see the possibility of a reverse flow of people away from overcrowded urban centers. For these reasons, the Federal Aviation Administration of the Department of Transportation is devoting considerable time and money to improvements that make it easier and safer for general aviation pilots to fly through the nation's airspace. Over the years, a comprehensive national airspace system has evolved. It includes electronic navigational aids, airport lighting and landing systems, air traffic control facilities, and all the other modern system elements that safeguard those who fly. They are all available to the general aviation community. The system includes special facilities, such as flight service stations, long the general aviation pilot's primary source of weather and routing information. And it includes the FAA's general aviation district offices, where local matters, including pilot examinations, are handled. A major part of the FAA's continuing effort in behalf of general aviation is training of new pilots and upgrading the proficiency of those with more experience. As more and more aircraft are added to the national airspace system, an ever-increasing level of proficiency is a must for everyone who flies. The FAA's effort starts right at the flight schools to assure that the quality of training meets satisfactory standards. The goal is to give each student the most thorough knowledge possible of the mechanics of flight and associated flying environment. A key to achieving this goal is the flight instructor. He's always been important, but he's becoming even more so. The FAA is continually seeking to upgrade the quality of instruction at every level of flight proficiency. For pilot John Brennan, this means thorough training in flight by instruments without visual reference to the outside horizon. Only when the instructor is convinced his student has mastered one step will he permit him to move on to the next. To be sure flight instructors maintain their own proficiency, the FAA requires them to renew their instructor certificates every two years. They may do this by graduating from a three-day flight instructor refresher course, by exhibiting satisfactory flight instruction performance records, or by demonstrating their current competency to an FAA inspector. The FAA's accident prevention program is another example of the effort being made to increase proficiency and improve safety. More than 80 accident prevention specialists work out of the FAA's general aviation district offices, putting on clinics and seminars around the country. This is a picture of a cumulus cloud, and a cumulus cloud normally to the person on the ground looks like a very pleasant situation. To a pilot, it presents a very dangerous symbol. Now that you understood what we're going to demonstrate, I want you to put this on as we agreed to. I'd like to ask you to all be very quiet because the noise you make might give away his relative motion. All right, which way are we turning you? Um, counterclockwise. Okay, now put your chin on your chest. Now pretty soon you're going to feel like the chair had stopped. When you feel that way, please say so. Now. Like All right, now. now suddenly raise your head. Oh, wow. <laughs> I feel like I'm going around in circles. All right, you see, you really are. You just thought you had stopped, but in actuality, you had not. Another effort the FAA is making involves flight service stations. We're filing an instrument flight plan up to Duluth. I want to see if Mr. Brennan here flies the airways well enough to schedule his instrument exam. Very good. How's the weather en route to the destination? Step in and we'll check it. Okay. Important changes are proposed to modernize facilities and relocate some of them to enable them to be even more helpful and along with other FAA programs, greatly improve flight safety. To the north and the northwest angle. It's moving eastward and the cold front is somewhat dry and should pose no problem. Of course, safety must apply equally to everyone who flies, and therein lies a growing challenge to the general aviation community. General aviation must share the nation's airspace. Chicago 7, American 92, out 330. 
American 92, Chicago Squad Guy, Dent, radar contact, inflatable 330. Controls and restrictions are now required in many congested areas to make sure aircraft are safely separated in flight. Flying in these areas requires radios to maintain communications with air traffic controllers on the ground. 07, Victor, Minneapolis, Coast Control, Squawk Code 04749 Transponders to assure proper radar identification and navigation gear to help stay on the electronic airways. There's no question that the skills required to fly in congested areas imposes a hardship on some pilots. But most, like John Brennan, know that upgrading their proficiency helps them get the fullest use of the system. It's important that the general aviation community address itself to the requirements of the total transportation system, then make its own unique requirements known to those who decide how airspace and financial resources will be allocated in the future. Even more important to general aviation today is the relationship between airports and their surrounding communities. Many local citizens think of airports only in terms of noise and congestion. Forgotten are all the important economic contributions they make to their communities, providing the many jobs required to serve the people who fly. Attracting businesses that want to locate away from congested population centers. Breathing new economic life into entire local areas. A way must be found to demonstrate these points to local citizens and show them what busy airports can mean to their communities. Leaders must speak up and speak out for the good of aviation and the urgent need for more aggressive community airport planning and development. The FAA can help assure the continued safety of all those who fly by setting forth flight rules and regulations, by making certain pilots are adequately okay, trained. John, as the uh, first part of your check ride, how about setting up a flight plan up to Fargo and then 9007 Victor, BE 30. By providing the services of a full air traffic system. Knots, proposed off Minneapolis at 1500. He's requesting 6,000. And helping to meet and beat the problems that thwart air commerce. No matter whether you are the most experienced pilot or the least, you are needed to help dispel the public myths that undermine general aviation's continued growth and to help separate the fact from the fiction. Oh, how do you do? That's pretty good. Yeah. How you doing? Well, very good. Uh, yeah. Hey, how about that? I made it. Hey. Uh, hey, now you can fly. Yeah. It's all right, huh? Yeah. Really good. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll tell you what, you did a good job.